What's going on, everybody? We back at it again, Sky and Crypto University. Another episode of Dot Connect Wednesdays. Today is episode 33. We're going to be talking about who is the founder of Bitcoin um, and uh, what is the ETF and how to make money on it. And we got a guest appearance by Satoshi Nakamoto himself. So I got him pinned. Yeah. He in the, he in the building with us as they don't know who he is. Chad, what's good? What's good? What's good? Satoshi, how you? We think good, champ. We've been trying to tell them for a minute, right? Yeah, man. They 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 ears wasn't open. They wasn't paying attention to what we was telling them. Okay. Now now BlackRock's in the game now. Now they now they ears open. Kathy Woods, they in the game now. Everybody's paying attention. We knew it was gonna happen like this too. Facts. Facts. We called it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead, get started, man. All right, sure. Let's get into it. Look, without without further ado, we are gonna jump right in. All right. So first things first. Who owns Bitcoin? All right. So this is about to be a a, a ride. We're gonna take y'all through. This is gonna be brief, but we're gonna walk y'all through it, right? So they gave us the very first cryptocurrency to exist. That was Bitcoin, right? The ticker is BTC. They gave us Bitcoin. In 2008, in 2009, it went live, right? So now everybody was able to use it beginning in 2009. But it's always been a big mystery about who was behind Bitcoin. They gave us a pseudonym name, Satoshi Nakamoto. And they told us this was the very first cryptocurrency people could use. And because of uh, Bitcoin itself, this is how we got blockchain technology. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so on August 25th, 1988, a gentleman by the name of David Swartz, he's the current CTO of Ripple. So he filed a patent that is nearly identical to Bitcoin right now. And when he created this patent, he was an employee of the NSA, right? So that's the National Security Administration. If you know anything about the NSA, they've created all the algorithms that exist right now when it comes to quantum computing and, and uh, cryptography, right? So it's huge that he worked for the NSA but it's even crazier that this was released in 1988. This is before the internet was allegedly created. The patent is here for y'all. And you can see the date here. It was filed August 25th, 1988. Fast forward. 1996, June 18th. The NSA published an essay and it was written by NSA employees. I repeat, in 96, the NSA had the employees of the NSA create an actual document, an actual essay. It's called How to Make a Mint, the Cryptography of Anonymous Electronic Cash. I have, this is the first page, the table of contents. It, it tells you, you know, all the breakdowns about electronic cash, cryptography, um, the security protocols and the algorithms behind uh, Bitcoin and, and uh, creating a digital currency, right? This was in 1996. This is, again, before Bitcoin and anything else existed. And if you look here in the footnotes, it says this research essay was prepared by NSA employees. All right. I link this here for you guys, too, because I know this isn't this is public information, but a lot of people aren't privy to it. So now let's get to the thick of it. So now you know that the paper itself was written by the employees of the NSA. You know the patent in 1988 was filed by David Schwartz. He was an employee of the NSA and he worked with them and he seen, well, let me hold off on that. So long story short, he worked for the NSA. But there's an algorithm that existed. In the beginning stage, it was shy one. 
SHA-1. SHA-1 was the first of its kind. And this was created, um, it created basically the mechanism behind what we know now as Bitcoin. So it takes a digital fingerprint and footprint and it was used as a tool by the government to spy on its enemies, right? So we're talking about financial transactions and, and all sorts of things, right? So this was how they were able to kind of lock in on certain people that they had their eyes on and they had identified as an enemy. And this is how they were able to basically follow them and mirror them and see everything that they had going on, right? Electronically. Again, this was the NSA. So there was a bunch of attacks that people started to figure out and launch against this algorithm. So they needed a new algorithm to, to be the um, successor. So SHA-1 got phased out after a whole bunch of uh, different attacks. They made SHA-2. SHA-2 is now the gold standard of cryptography, right? They use it for all sorts of things. And with the NSA being the creators of it, they now implemented this technology into Bitcoin. The only other project that is really notable is Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash. The rest of them, they're not household names. You, you, you may have to you know, do some real digging to kind of understand that. But this algorithm, again, was used just to spy on enemies. So now that they have this encryption and this algorithm behind Bitcoin itself, this was created in 2001. So this was created way before, and we're talking seven, eight years before Bitcoin even existed. They created this algorithm and had it in tow, ready and waiting for Bitcoin to be released to the world. So I gave you guys the background. It's commonly used, SHA-256, is commonly used to authenticate digital certificates, SSL certificates, and um, secure links between websites and your web browsers. Um, this is mainly focused on proof of work uh, consensus mechanisms. The main proof of work that started this all, of course, was Bitcoin, but Bitcoin didn't come about until 2008. Remember, this came out in 2001. All right, so now fast forward. 2008, the world gets blessed with this coin, this digital currency known as Bitcoin. And the person who created Bitcoin and released the actual white paper to it, you see it here. This is the first page of the Bitcoin white paper. It says Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, I want you guys to understand something. Anybody can just create something and post it on the internet. That we get, we understand. Now, I want you guys to honestly understand the magnitude of Bitcoin and where we are today. What else happened in 2008? We had a financial revolution. I mean, we had a, we had a financial collapse that happened in 2008. So upon the heels of this happening, we, out of the blue, get a white paper and we get the first cryptocurrency to exist. Bitcoin. See the coincidence? All right, bet. So now that you understand that Bitcoin, the technology behind it, was NSA. The 256 was created by the NSA. Everything points directly to our government being Satoshi Nakamoto, all right? So you guys got the white paper here. For those of you who haven't read it, I suggest that you take a, take a moment, read through it, it's short, a couple pages, right? But here's another thing that I want you guys to see. So I'm gonna go back on the slide. So in the footnotes on this 1996 essay that was written, again, by NSA employees, this footnote right here is from one of the authors, right? He's not listed as the main three, but he's one of the authors of, of other documents that they referenced inside this essay. His name is Tatsuki Akamoto. Come on, man. 
This was in 96. Now, who, fast forward, who was the author of the Bitcoin white paper? Look right here, y'all. Satoshi Nakamoto. And this was a 12-year difference before Bitcoin was ever even a thing in 96. You see those names? You see the players behind it? All right. So I can't play. There's a video that I want to play for you guys. I can't play it like this. So give me one second. I'm going to pull it up for y'all because I want y'all to see this. But just to recap, David Swartz filed the patent for distributed computing. And that was the whole basis of blockchain in 1988. Then in 96, you had the NSA white paper. That came out and that was 12 years before Bitcoin white paper even existed. The name reference in the 96 essay, that was Tatsuki Akamoto. Now in 2008, when we got the Bitcoin introduction, it was Satoshi Nakamoto. And they want you to believe that this guy or this group of people, it's actually a group of four, is unknown. And the algorithm behind Bitcoin's creation was all NSA. That's SHA-256. And it was used to spy on enemies. So what you got to understand is there is no anonymity. The whole time, they knew. They knew who Satoshi Nakamoto is. They knew who the quote-unquote group was. So let me play this video for y'all, man. We looked at Bitcoin. It was the most prevalent at that point. We had seized quite a bit of it, millions of dollars worth under the Silk Road investigation. So one of our agents who started looking at another online marketplace um, through the deep web, which was called Black Market Reloaded, they were sending weapons um, through packages and through app, ordering them on the dark web. And he was really, really smart, forward-leaning agent. And he goes, I want to go interview Satoshi Nakamoto. And we're like, what? He said, yeah, I want to go interview this guy. And at the time, we're like, hey, it's a figment of somebody's imagination. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not true. So, you know, we had all this pushback from our headquarters. And we thought, hey, if an agent wants to go talk to him and we have some money, why don't we send him? Let's find out how this works. So as it came to be, the agents flew out to California and they realized that he wasn't alone in creating this. There were three other people and he they sat down and met with them and talked to them to find out how this actually works and what their reason for it was. Hello. So that person you just heard, that was the Department of Homeland Security agent, Rana Shoud, right? She was in an interview uh, doing a sworn statement stating that she knew and the U.S. government knew and had met with Satoshi Nakamoto, this group, right, who they claim is anonymous. What you guys got to understand is Y'all would be playing yourselves to think they would allow the first cryptocurrency ever created, ever known to come out, people to build upon it, ecosystems to be created around it, and the government not know who it is? Come on, be serious. They know and they have known. Now you do. The NSA is behind Bitcoin. Satoshi, 